girl Victoria back to you with another review for Married at First Sight season 18 episode 3 called Did Y'all Meet My Husband? We met all the husbands, amen, okay, and not impressed. So <laughs> we're picking up where we left off last week with Michelle. She's walking down the aisle. You know, David's seeing her, you know, he and his sleaze balls with sleaze ball ways just licking his lids, laughing and stuff, like, oh hello, beautiful. And I'm like, please stop. You know, she pretty and anything, but please stop, David, because it ain't it, no. So uh the fishing is, you know, introducing them to each other, even though they already introduced it each other to themselves and when she was going talking about um things about what michelle's family has to say about her she does mention her three babies but she didn't say fur babies so you have david and his little brother looking like three babies wait wait where they at i don't see the three kids it's fur babies you know i don't know why they always do this every season and making it seem like oh they got kids when it's really like i mean it's kids but not kids if you know what i'm saying so when we get to David's part of what his family and friends had to say about him, you know, they make mention that um, he's a mama's boy. And I'm just like, why are y'all putting all this? That is not a flex. Because usually when we say mama's boy, it don't mean something good. It really means something like, oh, you you, you still on your mama's titty. So, I mean, let her know what's going on. But at the same time, like, y'all trying to make her run away or something? Maybe y'all don't really see him as you know, ready for marriage or something. So you're trying to let her know, like, look, you know, he's still in his mama's titties. I don't know if you want to, you know, still be with him. And, you know, other things going to make her run away too. But, you know, it seemed like from what it looked like for the season or how it's going to go is the fact because he's still on his mama's titties because she do stuff for him, you know, he can't do nothing for himself. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, you know, I understand her concern, you know, for sure. <laughs> but uh rest of the ceremony goes well they kiss on the lips and whatnot and then you know while we should be focusing on them i was more so focused on his parents i'm like wow david's mom and dad do make a beautiful couple you know i was even focused on david and uh his wife michelle um they go to the back and they you know pop some bubbly and talking a little bit you know david asking if she drinks and she says socially and what he's asking her this it looked like they was on their second glass of champagne and i'm just like you sure just socially or you so you just get down socially but you know you don't drink at the house she's like i never drink at the house if you say so michelle here go david oh yeah me too I don't. david stop lying i said first first of all david 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 you look like a hardcore drinker so you talk about you know you don't just be popping a beer at the house. I'm like, that's the fact that you're so specific in that seems like that's exactly what you do at the house. You come home on a Friday night with your little two six packs, go down to the basement, you know, put on your little TV show or, you know, the game or something. And you definitely be popping some bottles with some friends. So uh, that was the first red flag. I mean, there was actually other red flags, but like that's, that was your first lie of a red flag. And then he goes to, oh, he smokes cigarettes. Second lie. Second line, because David, 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 um, you say you smoke cigarettes, you know, I could see you smoking cigarettes as a backup. I could see you smoking cigarettes as a plan B. But you don't smoke cigarettes. David, David, be honest with her, okay? You, 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 you smoke more than cigarettes, okay? I know, and you... David, I know what you smoke. You know what you smoke. People who watch and know what you smoke. It, it ain't no damn cigarettes. You may, like I said, maybe a plan B, but it's definitely giving the green. Okay, we we talking about the natural THC that you roll up and stuff. You you lick the wrapper to close it up and stuff. You know, you light it up to make sure it's not too wet. You know what I'm talking about. I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I have friends who do that stuff. I I, I don't do that stuff. Give me an edible short. You know, that, I, I, don't, I don't do, you know, I don't, I don't do, I, I like my lungs, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, second lie. You know, David, you're not, you're not, you're, you're, you're going on the downhill slope. So yeah, after that, you know, Michelle was like, that's gross. And I'm like, yes, Michelle, that's gross. Gross. Yeah, yeah. And, um, he talking about he gonna quit for her and stuff. I'm like, David, why you lying, bro? You ain't about to quit. Like, you could try, but if you do on a consistent basis, which I feel like you do, easier said than done, sir. So, I'm like, okay, another lie. And then, 
that's when he missed that, you know, he lives with his parents. You know, he lives at his parents' house in their basement. And, you know, Michelle's just like, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Yes, Michelle. Yes, it is crazy. Um, my mama let me know what I said last week was incorrect because, you know, he's 36, so he shouldn't be living at his parents' house. And I'm just like, but, you know, the economy and stuff. She's like, no, he's, he got two jobs. I'm like, you right. I understand. But, you know, maybe he just shouldn't be on the show. I can understand if you have to live with your peoples, you know. Um, but if that's the case, you shouldn't be on the show. So I, 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 I retract what I said last week. Not that much. Not that much because I can understand situations. But in this case with David, you shouldn't be on the show. Okay. So I'm like, you know, technically this is a fourth red flag because the mama's boy was the first red flag. So, you know, you are, you've been out ever since you lied about the sea guys. So then we move on to the couples. They taking their wedding pictures. Nothing to take from that. We get to the couples going to the receptions. We start off with Michelle and David. You know, they have their first dance and they talking and whatnot. I'm looking at Michelle's body language and stuff, her facial expressions and stuff. She's just looking so uncomfortable and awkward and, you know, saying she's letting us know in confessional that she's like overwhelmed and, you know, doesn't like that he lives with his parents and, you know, she's not trying to focus on it, but, you know, she's trying to chillax. But it's really, you know, taking a gander on her brink. And I'm like, you know, I understand, uh, Michelle, but, you know, you got to get it together. You know, get it together, girl, because you're looking very stiff. And then we move on to Camille and Thomas. They have their first dance and talking and stuff. That's actually, you know, really Thomas talking. Camille looking like, you know, she a little uncomfortable herself. But I guess he said something that made her feel a lot less nervous and stuff. I'm like, if you say so, Michelle, but you still look nervous to me. And, you know, you look uncomfortable, but what do I know? And then we move on to Carla and Juan, you know, their family and friends are clinking glasses and stuff. So Carla's clinking her glass and said, oh, we have to kiss. And then, you know, got Juan saying, oh, is that what that means? Juan, this is season 18. I'm so tired of you guys. Every There's always one person on this damn show every season who's talking about, oh, I didn't know clinking glasses meant that we need to kiss at a wedding. Have you never been to a wedding before? People, get it together. I'm, 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 I'm keep it calm because, you know, y'all about to piss me off. But, you know, not, not today. So then we get to back to Camille and Thomas. They sit down to eat and talk. And, you know, they talk about Thomas's longest relationship. We know it was nine years. And, you know, I guess it came to him being afraid of commitment. So that concerns Camille a little bit, understandably so. And then we move on to M.M. and Ketchy. They're eating dinner and talking. And, you know, she's asking what his type is. He's saying, you know, first of all, first and foremost, she beautiful. Okay. But he don't got no type, you know. And, you know, it's more about the energy. And I'm like, Ikechi, that sounds like something I would say. No, 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 no. Stop lying to this girl. Yes, she's beautiful, but somebody could be beautiful and not your type. And it's clearly showing she's not your type. You want to talk about energy? You catch it? From the from what I get, grasped of your reaction to her walking down the aisle when you first saw her, I already knew you wasn't feeling home, girl. So now that she asking if she your type and you want to say she's beautiful but you don't got no type, that means she's not your type. It was a simple yes or no, but since you want to go around it, a direct answer, that just telling me that's a no. And you didn't want to hurt her feelings. You see people, people lying left and right. It's only episode three. So then, you know, coming to find out he get a single for the wedding. I'm like, you you would have thought they was together for 12 years the way he, you know, he trying to pull out all the tricks and stuff. After the person's saying, he going to say another poem for her. I'm like, sir, this is the first night. How many poems you got in the first night? Like, you guys still got weeks and weeks of, and upon weeks to for you to be wooing her with poems, bro. You you letting all your tricks out the bag and you just met her 45 minutes ago. Get it together. Y'all need to get together. That's what the episode should have been called. Get it together because I'm just trying to understand why are you doing all this on the first night? I mean, I know you're trying to woo her, impress her, impress her family and friends and whatever. But for me, I'm just like, it's not giving, you know, impressed. It's giving cringe, sir. So then we move on to Madison talking with Alan's friends. Alan talking with Madison's friends. Nothing to take from that yet. David talking with Michelle's friends. Michelle talking with David's parents. And, you know, she was mentioning, you know, the fact that he smokes cigarettes. You got the mom defending her son saying, you know, it's not all the time. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, mama. See, this I'll be talking about, you know, mama's boy for sure. Because you 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 seem like the type of mama that he can do no wrong. And if he do wrong, it was a mistake or, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. You're going you gonna to take it for your son each and every time, which, you know, I can understand by the same time, mama. This is why he is the way he is. This is why he li living at your house, don't want to leave. And the daddy enabling too, because he's just like, oh, he don't want him to leave. So I was like, so what you want, Michelle to move in with y'all and all y'all live in the house? I mean, granted, you know, they they, don't, they won't have no bills, you know what I'm saying? They, 
the rent and mortgage on this is just ridiculous. But at the same time, I can't live in no other woman's house. I'm sorry, even my mama. I love you, mom. You know, I mean, I can't, but not forever because I'm sorry. I, I, I come from a people, family of respect. And even though I do have access to the kitchen, but, you know, because I do love to cook, but it's like, this is not my kitchen. This is my mama's kitchen. So I'm not really going to be in here cooking and whipping it like I would at my own house. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, mom, you're not helping. You're not helping whatsoever. So after that, we have Juan talking with Carla's sister and brother-in-law. Carla talking with Juan's brothers. Nothing to take from none of these type of scenes. Um, for the most part, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, they wasn't too harsh on them. And it seemed like for the most part, everybody's smooth sailing. And then we get to Thomas talking with Camille's bridesmaids. Okay. He was, you know, they talked about his longest relationship, which was nine years, and he did admit to them that it ended because he cheated. So, of course, his um, Camille's bridesmaids are concerned, understandably so. Um, but they didn't, was, they wasn't too tough on him. They did ask, you know, good questions. And, but, you know, at the same time, you know, for those who have watched my reviews on this damn show, I hate this segment of them talking to family and friends because on a real life basis if i met you 45 minutes ago i'm probably not meeting your family and friends so i don't give a f what they gotta say look i know they have your best intention at heart but having an interview with them what is that gonna do because people are still gonna f around and and find out so th th these scenes are pointless to me so that's why it's just like i'm just going through these because I, I really don't care about family and friends opinions because they're always gonna you know be defensive of you know their sibling or whoever the case may be who's getting married to the other person so it's just like i you know y'all gonna give him a tough time you know or give her a tough time and ask all these questions and just like you should like this is not your place right now but what do i know uh, i just watched the show and then we get to Camille talking with Thomas, groomsman, you know, her being concerned of Thomas and his commitment, but I guess they made her feel better or whatnot. And then we have M.M. talking with Ketchy's groomsman. That goes well. Ketchy talks with M.M.'s cousin. So the cousin is definitely interviewing him hard, you know, not giving him no leeway, no grace, the cold shoulder. Ketchy seems to handle it well, saying, you know, I'm going to take care of her and stuff. The cousin still don't seem convinced. Like, I don't know you how I know. Sir, all y'all need to calm down. All y'all need to calm down. Because no matter what they say, they can still hurt your cousin, whatever the case may be. So, like, you're just going to have to wait and find out what happens. Like, chill out. Chill out, people. So, then we get to Camille talking with her bridesmaids. And, you know, she says she does like Thomas. And, you know, they tell her about how he did cheat on the nine-year relationship female. And, you know, he does seem confident that he won't do it again since he went to counseling and stuff like that. And, you know, Camille was a little apprehensive that, you know, you know, obviously they found out more than she did. But, you know, she's still excited for the marriage. And, you know, they talk about sex, you know, if she's going to do it tonight. And she was like, you know, probably not. And I'm just like, okay, good. Yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, probably not. So good for you, Camille. So then we move on to Madison talking about her bridesmaid. And they explain how, you know, it seemed like he has a lot of uh, childhood trauma with his parents. And also, you know, toxic relationship with his last ex or whatever the case may be. And, you know, Madison was very appreciative that he told uh, her friends that and not her because, you know, uh, I guess he wasn't trying to trauma bond and whatnot. So, you know, that's that's cool. You know, she's looking very positive of things, you know, unlike Michelle, because, you know, when she go and talk with her friends, you know, she gets all, you know, quiver lipped, and, you know, saying that, you know, she's a bit hesitant, start crying and stuff. You know, they take it. The girls take her to the bathroom. So she admits to them that, like, oh, you know, he still lives with her, his parents, and she's fixated on that and, you know, having a breakdown. So they have to calm her down. You know, goes to commercial for dramatic effect. Comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And she, you know, her friends are calming her down saying, listen, you know, get the full story before you judge, sweetie. And it's like, yes, that's good advice, friends. You guys are great friends, you know. Because I feel like even though I'm going to be there for her physically in my head, I'm going to be like, stuck it up, buttercup. This is what you wanted. This is, <laughs> this is what you wanted. You should know. Coming on Mary at first sight, you don't know what you're going to get. It's like a, a ring box and the thing. So, you know, here, here we go, Michelle. Here we go. Welcome to Mary at first sight. So she goes back out, you know, he's like, oh, he was looking for his wife. He's like, oh, there you are. And like, she was just acting so fake with him. Her last was just so fake. I'm like, Michelle, blink twice if you want to get out. It's not too late. Like I said, y'all could get an annulment. Ain't no problem with that. You know, do what you got to do. But, you know, don't drag it out for eight weeks. 
when we know you clearly you've been in despair since day one you know what i'm saying so um i guess you're gonna try to tough it out and um like since it's his birthday it looks like the little brother got him a box of chips and you know he was passing out saying you get a box of chips you get a box of chips i'm like really i mean i guess it was a gag gift but I really feel like, brother, you, you could have done better. Like, we, we couldn't have done, a, like, a little better, like, sentimental gift to kind of, excuse me, because, you know, she already feeling some type of way that he lives with the mom, so now you're giving him a bag of chips. It's, like, makes makes things more or less, more unserious than it should have been, I feel like. If you would have gave him a sentimental gift, it probably would have passed over well with homegirl Michelle because she already freaking out that he lived with the mama and stuff, and you kind of not making no better that you got him some chips because, you know, she think, oh, he probably, you know, eating them chips downstairs in the basement with his greens, even though he said cigarettes, but it's like, we know it's not no cigarettes. We know it's greens. And, you know, with your six, two six-packs of beer that you say you don't drink at the house, you know. So, like, brother, you know, what, what, you, what you doing anyway so everybody parties and the couples leave you know they go to their hotel rooms and get comfortable and whatnot but i'm just like these hotel rooms don't look like hotel rooms these look like full-blown houses like we, these don't even look like hotel suites these look like houses because we see them going upstairs to the bedroom and i'm like so these are like full-blown like okay okay and I'm, I'm like i'm not mad at it you know i see y'all doing what y'all do Y'all should, y'all should drop, you know, put commercials of what these places are and stuff. Cause I, I would, I would definitely take a solo trip there. Anyway, enough about me. Back to these folks. So we got Dave and Michelle, uh, they're in their room and most people, well, not most, all the other couples got like, you know, more so honeymoon decor and the petals on the bed, she's shaped on a hoard and stuff like that, you know, cute, uh, corny stuff. But for David and Michelle's room, it was like happy birthday stuff for David. I'm like, why would y'all do this? Y'all, why would y'all do this? Y'all should have put some decor that was more geared towards the, them too. I know it's his birthday, but leave his family to, you know, give him gifts and stuff. Not to do, to decorate their suite, him and Michelle on their wedding night with happy birthday was just like, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. But, you know, I guess Michelle didn't like it either because when it got time for her, well, to get in bed she was in like full-blown pajamas like not the sexy kind kind of like basic kind that you do that they have in the movies and stuff with the long silk pants and you know the i mean not a long sleeve silk shirt but it was a button up for sure and she buttoned up to the top button but she did talk with him when they got in the room saying you know she's still hesitant about him living with his parents and stuff and i guess he said a few things i guess to make her feel a little bit better but, you know, she's still hesitant, and I think she's going to continue to be hesitant for the rest of the um, their marriage. So, experts, you, 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 you effed up again. But, I guess we're going to have to see how it goes. And then we got Juan, he playing his guitar for Clara, and, she, and he sings, and I'm just like, that's cute, but no thank you. Juan. One, one. Uh, I thought she was going to sing in Spanish, you know, do roll of the oars when you singing and stuff. You make it sensual and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And then you do this, which is like a freestyle, nothing rhymed. And I'm just like, e for effort, one. E for effort. And then we have Camille, you know, she brought her silk pillowcase for her hair and stuff like that. I'm like, that's cool, you know, because she didn't want to wear the bonnet, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm sorry, my, my pillowcase, that it ain't still. But you know what? I do got my bonnet, though. This, this is the bonnet right here. I'm going to put it on right after I do this video while it's loading. The bonnet the bonnet only comes off when I'm about to leave the house. When I'm about to shower because I put on my shower cap. And when I do these reviews because, you know, I could wear a bonnet. But I don't want to. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But if, if I ever get that comfortable, I don't know. But, all right, she got the silk, you know. We being real, Camille. I like that. I appreciate that. And um, we didn't get to David and, like I said, Michelle going to bed. And I do like his hair down and whatnot. Um, and like I said, with Michelle's outfit, like, you know nothing going to happen tonight. You know nothing going to happen tonight with that outfit. And then lastly, we have Alan. He got some hot pink boxer briefs on with some broccoli on it. All right, Alan. You being yourself, listen, we, we love a quirky, corny, funny guy. I ain't mad at it. To be honest, like from the vibes, you give best husband thus far to me. Um, 
But yeah, you know, that was it. Thank you guys for so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. <laughs> if you left at least once, please subscribe. If you didn't laugh, that's cool. You know, come back next week. You know what I'm saying? So I can make some more corny jokes. Hopefully you laugh at my corny jokes next week so you can subscribe next week, you know. And uh, comment down below what you thought about this episode. Be easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.